All right, so today I would like to talk about the base promoted hydrolysis of an amide. And the amide that we will be using today is acetamide, a very simple amide. We have our carbonyl group here in the middle, just methyl on the side. And then over here we have an NH2. So this is just like acetone where the CH3 on one side is replaced by an NH2. So it's a very, very simple compound. We'll be reacting this with hydroxide in water and coming out with this compound over here on the right. So our methyl group will be maintained, our carbonyl will be maintained, and we have a negatively charged oxygen substituted where the NH2 was, and in solution as well will be a neutral NH3. All right, so how do we get about doing this? How do we, uh, well, what does the reaction mechanism looks like? Will it look like? Well, let's look at the mechanism uh, sequentially here. So we have acetamide here, and we're going to have our hydroxide ion. Let's go ahead and draw in all the electrons on the hydroxide. And of course, hydroxide is going to have a negative charge. Well, what are we going to do here? Well, the negative charge from the hydroxide, these negative electrons are going to react, attack this portion of the carbonyl. And why are they going to attack here on the molecule? Why don't they attack here? Why don't they attack here? Well, let's look at this molecule. On, on the OA, on the carbonyl group, we're going to have this more electronegative oxygen up here on the top. And that more electronegative oxygen is going to cause it to have a partial negative charge. And that's going to cause this carbon down here on the bottom to have a partial positive charge. And because of that, this partial positive is going to attract the negative charge of the hydroxide group. So that's what's going to happen there. Well, when that happens, if we go ahead and tack on this hydroxide here, that's going to cause carbon to have five bonds, which is not okay. So we need to kick some of these electrons. We need to take this pi bond and turn it into a sigma bond by kicking those pi electrons, or two of those pi electrons back onto this oxygen. If I could draw an arrow, that might be better. There we go, close enough. And so when we do that, Here's what we're going to end up with. Here is our next compound. We, of course, maintain our methyl group. We have our carbon here with our OH attached to the carbon, drawing those electrons. Our NH2 at this point is still completely unchanged. And here we have an oxygen on the top now with that extra set of lone pairs, and it has a negative charge. So. What do we need to do now? Well, let's not worry about anything else that's in solution. Let's just have uh, some intramolecular rearrangement here. So this negative charge on this carbon is going to want to go back down and reform the pi bond. So those electrons will kick back here. But once again, we have a situation where carbon is going to have five bonds, which is not acceptable. So let's go ahead and kick these electrons onto the NH2 here. Now, these are, the NH2 is going to want them. It's going to be a lot more electrophilic than this methyl group, which is just kind of want, want to want to sit there. It's not going to be a good leaving group at all. So the NH2 is it's an acceptable leaving group here. So these electrons will kick onto that, and this is going to let us go to the next step here. Let me <laughs> draw some arrows better. All right. Go to the next step of the reaction, which our molecule is now going to look like this. We have our methyl, which hasn't been touched, and uh, honestly, it won't be touched for the entirety of the reaction. We have our uh, central carbon maintained, and now look, we've reformed the pi bond to that carbon, which is good. We've done that. Now the NH2 is gone, and what do we have? Well, we have OH right here. Let me draw that a little bit better. We have OH, and we'll draw in the electrons on that, on that oxygen. Do a decent job of that. All right, now, do we have any charges on this molecule? No, we do not have any charges. This is a neutral molecule, but we do have... Hang on. Sorry about that. A video started in the background. Um, we don't have any charge on this molecule at all, but we do have a charge on the NH2 that has been taken off into solution. The NH2 that we have in solution now here is going to be negative because we kicked off these electrons onto it, right? We added those, so now it has a negative charge and no lone pairs. Well, no, 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 we still, yeah, we, have, we should have, we have some lone pairs on the nitrogen. Yep, my bad, we have lone pairs on the nitrogen. So what's going to happen now? Well, we're going to have some rearrangements going on here. <clears throat> 
in this molecule over here on the left where we have the carbonyl, we're going to want to attack this hydrogen with the negative charge from the NH2. So that will attack the hydrogen. And then the electrons that were attacking, that were attacking, that were attaching the hydrogen to this oxygen, that will kick back onto that oxygen, okay? And this is going to cause the oxygen to have a negative charge on the end. So let's go ahead and go to another screen here. So here's what we're left with at this point. Let's look at what we had. Well, we have our unchanged methyl carbon here, our oxygen. We have our oxygen with three lone pairs and a negative charge. And what else did we have? Let's see. Yes, and in solution we now have NH3, which is neutral. All right. And now look, what does this look like? Well, this looks to me exactly like what we started out with, acetamid reacted with hydroxide and water, and we're done. We have our negative charge and our oxygen here and our NH3. But let's say, let's, let's say we wanted to take this a step farther. Let's say we wanted to make this not have any charge on, the, um, on this parent compound here, on the carbonyl compound. What if we wanted to get rid of that? What if we wanted to protonate that? So we finish the reaction from what we wanted to do in the very beginning. We, we're done. I mean, we've got, we've got the compound we initially wanted, but let's go ahead and protonate this just for fun. So let's say we could, we have, we react this guy here with H+. Plus. What are we going to get when we protonate? Well, the H+, plus, of course, is going to react with what part of the molecule? Well, the negative part. So this negative right here is going to attack the positive portion of that. And that's pretty simple. That's pretty much all that's going to happen. It's just going to take up that hydrogen. So now what we have is methyl carbonyl OH. And what do we have over here? What's going to happen to this? Well, this guy here will be an NH4. What kind of charge? Positive charge on the NH4. So this is the molecule that we wanted to finish with. And we got that. But this is what we could do if we wanted to additionally protonate our final product. So, all right, quick recap of this base protonated hydrolysis of acetamid. We have acetamid in hydroxide with water. And the partial dipoles on the carbonyl cause the OH, <clears throat> the negative charge on the OH to attack the carbonyl carbon in the molecule. This causes a pi electron rearrangement to put a negative charge here on the carbonyl, what was the carbonyl oxygen. That negative charge, of course, doesn't like to be there, so it's going to go back and reform the pi bond after the addition of OH. The OH is already added. It's not going to be a good leaving group here. We don't have any halogens or anything in solution to make OH a good leaving group. So it's going to kick those electrons back, on, reform the pi bond, kick the electrons off here onto what's now our good leaving group, this NH2. And that is going to leave us with this guy right here. We have our OH. The OH is going to rearrange and, uh, <clears throat> and get rid of this. Uh, it's going to be deprotonated, and we will end up with this guy right here. But, of course, we could reprotonate with some H+. Plus, and in order to keep this molecule from uh, changing again, we're going to have NH4 with a positive charge in solution. All right, and so that is the entirety of the mechanism for this reaction.